All right, guys, we're back with um, some more integrals to do and some more integration to try with some new rules. Remember, we learned how to undo power rule. Uh, we also learned how to use u substitution, and we did some trig integration. So now we're going to work with natural logs and exponential functions today. Um, the first one, we kind of, I modeled this in class uh, by actually thinking about what the derivative of the natural log is. Um, and the derivative of the natural log, as you remember, is 1 over what's inside. So if you have 1 over a function, uh, then that's the natural log of the function. Now notice we put in the absolute value. Uh, that way we don't end up taking something that we can't actually take the natural log of. So let's try it out. I think you'll find this pretty straightforward. Okay, so in this first guy, we've got a rational function. Uh, your first instinct might be to try u substitution. So let me just show you why that won't work here. Uh, if we let the top be u, then the bottom would be, or excuse me, the derivative would just be 1, which wouldn't help get rid of the bottom. So that's not a smart choice. Maybe you might think, let's try letting the bottom equal u. Well, if we take the derivative of that, we end up with 6x. And the derivative and du equals then 6x dx. Now that, if we take a look at what we've got back over here, we've got x over u dx. If we separate the u and the x, then we can see yes, that's going to work for us. So this is the right choice. So we've got du over 6 equals x dx. So plug that in. We've got 1 over u du over 6, we can bring that 1 sixth out front, Oops. and then we know if we have 1 over u du, that's just natural log of u. Now, of course, the last step would be to both plug in a, your u value, so I'm going to plug back in u, and then add c. All right, in example 2, Again, I'm going to try letting the bottom be u. Let's take a look and see what happens. Derivative of both sides, I get negative 2, negative 2 dx, and divide both sides by negative 2. Now again, if you want to, before you start doing all this, some people really do find it helpful to rewrite the integral with the u so they can see what they need to replace. In this one, the only thing I need to replace is the dx. So I did go ahead and solve that for dx. I'm going to bring the 1 half out front. The only thing then left, or excuse me, negative 1 half. The only thing left then is just the du. Again, the integral of du is natural log of u. And then I'm plugging the u back in. So I get negative 1 half ln of 9 minus 2x. And of course, plus c. In example three, um, the tricky part with example three, if you immediately start off with u substitution, of course, is that, check it out, the derivative of that is just going to be one. And if I come back over here and write integral of 2x minus one over u dx, I end up with quite a bit of stuff left to replace and nothing to replace that. So that's not a good option. I'm trying to show you when it's a good idea and when it's not a good idea to use u substitution. Um, same thing goes for letting the top be u. That wouldn't necessarily give me a 1 over x, so I'm not going to want to use that. So once again, guys, I cannot stress this enough. You have got to look to separate and simplify first. I'm going to add my dx there. Now this simplifies to just integral of 2 dx, and this stays 1 over x dx. Now it's a very simple problem. What's the integral of 2? Two? 2x. Two What's the integral of 1 over x? That's what we learned today. Negative ln, absolute value of x. You're done. Plus c. Simplify, simplify, simplify. Okay, and then the second half of today is exponential functions. You guys should already also know this. You already know that the derivative of e to the something is e to the something. So the integral is the same going back. Sometimes you do have to apply that u substitution. So uh, let's take a look at this. So first of all, if I want to take the antiderivative or the integral of e to the 3x over x squared, so the e becomes my difficult part to work with. It's a function within a function. So most of the time, we're going to be letting what's inside of that function be u. I'm going to do a little rewriting just to make it easier. 
take the derivative of both sides, and I end up with negative 3 over x squared, which, if we take a look at this, again, I'll go over here and write this. So we've got e to the u over x squared dx. Separate the x parts with the non-x parts. So this is what I'm hoping to replace. We definitely have an x squared, but we need to get the dx on the other side, and we also need to move that negative 3, but I'll take that one step at a time. So right now we have negative 3 over x squared dx. I'm going to separate those two. I don't normally use this many steps, but to show you guys I will. So see how I just pulled those apart? That way I had exactly what I needed, and then I can go ahead and plug, uh, bring this over. So negative 1 third du equals 1 over x squared dx. So this is all going to be replaced with negative 1 third, which I'm going to bring out, du. I still have my e to the u. The integral of e to the u is e to the u. Plus c. And then, of course, you'll finish by filling in your u value. So again, a lot of times when you see e with a function inside, that's what we're going to let be u. All right, and so in my last one, um, we're going to do a little bit differently. Um, let's say that you decided to let the bottom be u. Well, when you do the derivative, you end up with 1. Clearly, that's going to be an issue. If the bottom's u, you have all this stuff on the top, so that's not going to work out. So that's not a good choice. Maybe you say, let me try letting the top be, uh, be u. So, okay, let's give that guy a go. So du over dx equals 2x minus 1 du equals 2x minus 1 dx, but the problem is if I go over here, replace the top with u, and separate, I don't end up with something that I can easily replace. So those are the tip-offs that u is not, using u substitution is not a good idea. So if you didn't notice in the beginning, I had said using long division, so yes, it may have been something you thought you were done with after pre-calculus, but no, we have lots of uses for long division in this class and beyond in math. So we're going to actually do the long division. That way we can simplify this into something that we can deal with. So if you forget how to do long division, I'll remind you here. Before we do it, I'll do, it, I'll do an easier one off to the side. Let's say we did 641 and we decided to divide by 3. Remember, for long division, you ask yourself how many times 3 goes into 6. Technically, you're doing 600, but it's 2. And again, technically, it's 200, but we just put the 2. So 2 times 3 is 6, or 600, if you will. But we subtract that out, so we took out 600. Then we have 4 left, or technically 41. So then how many times does 3 go into 4? It goes in 1, or you're technically doing 10, but then times 3... We subtract that out, we get 11. How many times does 3 go into 11? 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. We subtract that out, and we're down to 2, but 3 is bigger than 2. So we have a remainder of 2 thirds, so 213 and 2 thirds. So now let's just do that with a polynomial. So we do the same things. Here we said 3 goes into 6 how many times, or what times 3 goes into 6? So here, what times x becomes x squared? That would be an x. Then we multiply 2 times 3 to get that value, or in this case, 1 times 3 to get that value, and so on and so forth. So once you figure that out, then you actually multiply out what that would be. So x times x plus 3 is x squared plus 3x. But remember, we were subtracting that out. So then you're going to switch both signs or subtract. If it was already negative, you'd make it positive. So then we add these guys together. Now that we switch the signs, we end up with negative 4x, and I like to bring down the rest of my values. Okay, now we do the same thing. x goes into negative 4 how many times? Or what multiplied by that gives you negative 4x? And it would be negative 4. Then we multiply negative 4x minus 12. Again, we're subtracting, so we're going to switch both signs. And then we'll put them together. The 4x's cancel, as they should. I get 16, but again, now I'm smaller than what I'm trying to go into. So that's my remainder. Just like I had 2 over my divisor, I have 16 over my divisor, x plus 3. So how does this help me? Well, this is the same thing as this, just written separately. So this value will be the same if I take the integral of each little 
apart. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do them separately. So the integral, if you wanted to write it out nice and neat, I would have an integral symbol and a dx with everybody. This one's easy. That's just go up by a power, divide by the power. This one's easy. It's a constant, 4x. This one's going to take a little more work. We need, we have a denominator. Um, we could take the derivative of our denominator, um, but we're going to need that u substitution here. So the derivative of this guy is just 1. So du equals dx. That's nice. Um, oops, this one needs a dx. So I'm going to go back up to this problem. I'm going to replace the bottom with a u. I'm going to separate the u stuff from the non-u values. And then here we go. We can re we can plug in for this. Now, though we do have a 16, which technically could be a problem, but because it's constant, it's not. So I'll bring the 16 out front, and I'll replace the dx with the du relationship I know from here. So now this is where we kind of bring it all together for today. These guys we've already taken the antiderivative of, hence why the integral in the dx is gone. Here you should know the integral of 1 over u is the natural log of u. And then we can, again, put it all together by actually filling in that u value, which was x plus 3. So plus 16 ln x plus 3. And of course, plus a possible constant. All right, that's it. You've seen a few examples. Uh, some of them will be a little trickier. Remember, sometimes you may think you're going to go in one direction with u, and that doesn't quite work out. So if you pick one that you don't like and, and you take the derivative and it doesn't look like it's going to work, maybe try something else. Um, keep an eye out for some of the little uh, bumps in the road that we dealt with today. All right, I'll see you in class.